folks welcome to another train some classic video we are back on the very beloved kansas city southern shreveport sub uh some of you may be aware of this route some of you may not if you are not this is uh, sort of a part two on the route i would implore you to check out part one because it's got some of the best damn scenery in any any freeware route nay any North American route in general for trains some classic. I will link that in the top right hand corner uh, if you want to go and check that out. Some incredible scenery and just line and route building all on its own. But this is the Shreveport Sub. This is uh, this is done by a fella of the community, Kansas City Southern 32. And this is the multiple year culmination of a lot of work. Uh, it ended here where we're currently at in Ashdown, Arkansas, and that was pretty much it. There was a, a lot more track to go south, um, you know, down to Shreveport, obviously the namesake of the subdivision. Uh, and it was not yet finished, but it was released in a state and it was out for a while and he wanted to finish it. So he took it down and this being part two is about 95% done uh this here so for those unaware this again is the kcs report sub by kc southern 32 uh, now this subdivision runs from hevener oklahoma which is about mile post 338 to shreveport louisiana which is mile post 550 something uh it's a lot of track it's this is a big route uh and it runs through four states oklahoma arkansas uh texas a little bit of texas and Louisiana and it gets down through most of all of them now essentially but it's a major north-south vein of uh, freight traffic rail freight traffic for the US to and from the Gulf of Mexico down to the south which is the way we're facing here kind of well it's east so it's more you know to the right but anyway so we'll go ahead and take a look at the map real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about here, if you're unaware of the map so far, it is now available. You can pick it up down at the link below. Let's go ahead and take a look at the map. So we are Ashdown, Arkansas right here. And this is a massive map. And this is Rich Mountain right here, this big curve. This is a huge uh, grade, big mountain pass. Yes, there are mountains in Oklahoma, believe it or not. That you know that shocked me the first time I, I learned of such things, but uh, this is this is evening up here where it starts. Again, I went through all this in the first video. I implore you if you've not seen it, uh, go check out the first video. When you get that done, start here because this is where we're at now. Uh, he had pretty much finished um, Ashdown, Arkansas, which is again where we're currently at. Uh, in the state that it was in, he touched it up a lot more because the line ended here and he he hadn't quite finished it yet. Um, but we're just going to go through and, and take a peek at what all's new. Now, it's uh, it's rare, but the guy has got an eye for detail in root building. And I'm grinning now as I say this, because I remember looking at this for the first time, the bit up north in Hevener. And even now, he went back and, and touched up this little area, which we're still in Ashdown, Arkansas. But this is the Little River uh, Chamber of Commerce, which is the old depot. It was built at, right at the turn of the century, about 1905, uh, as the Memphis, Paris, and Gulf Railroad. And uh, it's got an old caboose there, like a lot of depots do in America, or the most of the South anyway, um, which is an old cotton belt uh, caboose. And it was used at a bait shop. Uh, at one point, it served bait out of an old caboose, that thing down there on the left at one point. And then, uh, and then, you know, some fine members of the community and whatnot got a hold of it and uh, fixed it up a little bit. But that's what this area is here. And uh, just the little details. Now, this is a free wear route, so you got to keep in mind a lot of these assets are not uh, built. They are taken and aggregated from multiple assets on multiple routes, of which you will need. You're going to need quite a bit. Uh, that's all going to be listed in the link that I've linked down below uh, of what you'll need to run this incredible route. But, uh, man, the guy certainly has an eye for detail. This looks like a small town 
in the south it certainly does now of course this stuff right here is from the hanover sub yeah that's the gettysburg station right there but to a degree it essentially looks as it should if you pull this up on google maps tit for tat it will look like this and it's uh it's quite amazing so this this is the old line that runs over to the main line which uh this is the kcs shreveport sub right here that runs north and south but man, just just tiny little details like that. You may not even be over there all that much, but it's still really cool to see stuff like that. But one of the biggest things about this route that have kind of tickled me pink ever since I took a crack at it when it was first released is just the track laying and the right of way in itself. This is some of the best, most realistic looking track laying and right of way, to me anyway, in uh, in train simulator not only are the tracks nice i think they're the uh, the 3d trains uh tracks uh, what is it scale rail but you've got the uh, the old ties laying alongside that were just ripped up probably replaced with new tie you've got plenty of weed and foliage growing along the tracks and then you've got the built-up rail bed here which that looks pretty darn realistic. A lot of times and a lot of routes in Train Some Classic, it's just this super clean rail bed that just looks not very realistic. So this looks really nice to me. Of course, he's got uh, whistle boards all throughout here. Not only that, but we've got uh, boxes, junction boxes, signals. These are some very nice signals as well. I believe they're from 3D trains used on this map. We've got old pieces of rail lying along the main line. We've got... Uh, mow some maintenance crews out here laying some new track down little bits and pieces you'll see this stuff all throughout i'm not going to go through every little piece of this route because you'll find this everywhere there is so much detail on this over 200 miles of trackage for this route you have appropriate speed boards along each crossing you've even got some kansas city southern trucks which is very cool you got the uh, the propane and, and line underground posts there like that. The crossings, the, uh, the level crossings look very clean. It's just some damn good looking stuff. We'll go, uh, we'll zoop down here. So this right about here is where it ended um, last time I took a look at this. This was the end of the road as far as scenery. Uh, this down here to the left behind us is the uh, dump tar paper and paper mill. Uh, they basically just use pulp like any paper mill to make, you know, tissue, paper towels, diapers, packaging, all that good stuff. And it is friggin' massive. And again, to a T, it looks like this. Now, with that being said, I'm pretty sure he built it uh, probably late 90s it's supposed to be probably late 90s um early 2000s and not extremely modern because i do know now when they bring in the pine um it's brought through trucks on here and there's no there's no uh rail bed through here anymore as far as i know um so this is probably yeah you know, this is probably what it looked like a decade or so maybe two decades ago here but this is the rail yard here, and it stays pretty packed. I've just got a, a random collection of uh, cars set here. This is your connection. It's a, a Y, of course, very nicely on the line here. And one of the things that's nice about this route is the different variations of trees. Uh, you don't really see that a lot in North American train sim routes. Everything kind of looks super samey. And the South has a different kind of tree you know there's a lot of pine a lot a lot of long leaf pine and that's what i like about this route is he put all these pine trees in which which very much represents this area but not only that but there's all kinds of just different understory growth like you, you go through any any woods in the south and it's gonna pretty much look like this you're gonna have your main you know tree line and then just thick undergrowth that is you know guaranteed you will be covered in ticks and red bugs and whatever the hell else snakes crawling through there so that's what it looks like i uh i hike through it almost weekly down here where i live but this is the yard this is dumb to our paper of course you've got each line going over to the paper mill itself and just behold that for a moment if you will 
it is massive and it looks incredible. Everything he placed down, it looks almost to a T, a hundred percent to the real deal over there. This is the end of the yard down here. Got some more uh some more logging where they where they bring it in here and make the pulp. Got these two pulp piles, pulp piles sitting over here. Let's see what else we got here. These are like the main offices over here. Generally with these paper mills, like it's all industrial stuff. Like 95% of it is just industrial stuff. And then there'll be like a tiny little office where people sit. Um, and then, you know, sometimes there's control rooms and whatnot on, on bits of stuff like this. But uh, paper mills are pretty pretty neat to me. I, I grew up, my grandfather and uh, uncle worked at a paper mill in the Apalachicola Northern Railroad on the Gulf uh, in the Panhandle of Florida. And uh, that paper mill is no longer there, but I got very much used to uh, being around a paper mill because um, my family worked there for many, many years. And it's they're just neat places, um, you know, especially when they've got rail traffic. So this thing looks good. It looks like a paper mill. It looks very, very nice. Let's scooch back over to the main line here. So you go south quite a ways. This is a pretty straight part, straight shot down here. Where the hell are we at? Did I lose it? I lost it. Did I lose it? No, down here. I get lost. This map so damn big. Here it is. All right, so this is Ash Down up here. This uh, interchange. What is that? I forget the the little railroad here. Kiamichi. Yeah, it's still a railroad there. Kiamichi. I think it's uh, Genesee and Wyoming ran now. Anyway, this is where we're at right here currently, and it's pretty much a straight shot, so it's going to be full speed, max speed, going straight down, and then we'll cross the Red River, and that's Texarkana down there, which I'm very excited to take a look at. But even so, I'm not going to follow the entire route. Like I said, I'm going to leave that up to you to just explore and discover things because a lot of this route, even just middle-of-nowhere bits like this, look how damn good that looks. That looks so nice. I cannot get over it. It uh, it equals what he released as the first part of the uh, Shreveport sub. But, man, this, this red dirt, red clay down here alongside the tracks, you know, where uh, maintenance vehicles and whatnot have to drive to and fro, checking, you know, points, signals, junctions, all that good stuff, boxes. And then, of course, we've got, uh, you know, signal mass, speed boards, all that good stuff. And it's, it's tree-lined and bush-lined and grass-lined all throughout. It's a little, uh, little kind of like farm and ag depot looking building here. This is what they look like. It does say local air, <laughs> Glasgow's airline. That's from the uh, Edinburgh to Glasgow um, assets, which is one of the things you are going to need. Uh, if not, if you don't have that, this building won't be there. It's, I'm, you know, I'm pretty certain it's that simple. But uh, again, this, this little crossing right here. This looks so representative to things in the south that i've seen uh it's just it's done so well i'm telling you this guy has an eye for building this kind of stuff uh, there's a little neighborhood back in there as well but that just looks so damn good all right let's get on down to the red river all righty welcome to the red river bridge this is a big uh a big nice site on uh on part of this line the, uh, the Red River itself is about 1,300 miles long, and it flows through four states all the way to the Atchafalaya River and then to the Gulf de Mexico. And they call it the Red River because it essentially looks red. It's, it's you know, stuff from the, the, the ground, the dirt, whatever. I don't know the, the exact geological uh, terminology, but it's got a red look to it, so they called it the Red River. This, of course, is the bridge... Old bridge and new bridge going across. There's a historical old iron truss on the right there. And this area looks damn good. This right here where we're at is, uh, you know, somewhere where you'd come down, put your boat in, go fishing. And it's pretty much dirt and mud. And there's there's cars parked down here. They got their John boats in there, their, uh, their canoes, their fishing kayaks, whatever the hell, to do some fishing, maybe catch some catfish. But uh, this area looks really, really good. Again, this is the Red River itself. And he actually put a red tinge on the river. This is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. The little tiny details like this. It 
it might sort of look like peach tea to a degree, which is very tasty, by the way. But it's red. He got the color right. He didn't just throw down regular ass blue color for water. So that's that's very nice in itself. Uh, there's something going on with this. I don't know why this isn't throwing reflections. I don't know if I have my water reflectivity all the way up. I think it's because they don't... Do they actually go all the way in the water? Yeah, they do. So that's not the issue. Huh, I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's not reflecting this part for whatever reason. But this is a new bridge. And it looks damn good. This is the old one here. And look at that. All the overgrown weed. Just all the way down. All the way through the truss. And they just left, uh, you know, little bits of track here. This, this is, this is cozy. This is, uh, uh, it's nostalgic to me. I don't know. Just, uh, you know, seeing places just like this growing up, you know, and, and being around most of the South my entire life. This is what stuff looks like. And it, uh, it looks incredible. So like I said, we're going to skip a lot of the, the mileage between big points of the route because I'm going to let you discover that for yourself because, just because there may not be an industry or something that I'm not showing you down these long sight lines of track doesn't mean that they're not worth looking at because they are. I've kind of I've kind of floated around the map before I started doing this video, just kind of, I don't know, preparing myself and taking a look, and you will not be disappointed. All right, let's go down to Texarkana. Alrighty, welcome to Texarkana, the Twin Cities. Yes, it's got a fun name, and it's actually in two states. It's in Texas and Arkansas, or better known as Arkansas. And it's a huge, huge railroad town. At least it used to be a huge railroad town. Like a lot of towns in America, uh, it was built from the railroads. But looking north, uh, which is the direction we're facing here, that's Ashdown and the Red River. Uh, straight up yonder there, down, you know, through the horizon with the cars passing on. The, just little scenes like this. I'm smitten by little scenes like this and these crossings and all the signs. It just looks organic. It looks realistic. It doesn't look neatly manicured like some model railway, you know. It looks damn good. Anyway, let's look to the south. We'll scooch up in the air here. So we're not that far, actually, from Ashdown, Arkansas. That's right up that way a bit. You can, in fact... No, that's a cloud. I'm an idiot. There's a, I feel like there's a... I think there's a hydroelectric uh, facility up there on the left side of the river. If I'm not mistaken, that actually may be the Little River. I'm starting to get ahead of myself. Anyway, pretty good-sized town, uh, Texarkana. Like I said, in two states, Texas and Arkansas... And it's got multiple yards. It hosts multiple railroads. Uh, and it was just built from multiple railroads. It's got a major army depot uh, off to the west, which is that way. Uh, let's see. What else? We got a lot of big uh, industry here. Cooper Tire. Um, Dom Tar Paper, just like the, the paper mill we saw. Um, back up that away. Walmart's a big one here. Uh, and then we've got Union Station, which, oddly enough, is the same exact name of 99% of America's Amtrak stations, Union Station, uh, which hosts the Texas Eagle. But we'll uh, we'll get down to that in due time. So let's go ahead and start scooching southbound. Again, the right of way on both sides of the track looks really, really 
damn good. It's some of the best looking stuff I've seen. It's not just all one color. You know, it's it's muddy double tracks on both sides of the rails. Uh, this we're coming up to here, I believe, is Interstate 30 right here. I-30 runs uh, east and west. Got a water tower over here. And uh, again, I, I'm not going to go over every little thing, but the guy has got such a detail. Um, you know, for placing things down, just just city foliage, or organic matters, we'll call it. Um, it it just looks really good. There's a lot of mix of two and three D trees. Uh, you know, some of them are are track side, which you know is sometimes noticeable, like this one here, because you can see it kind of turns with the camera. But that was also done in a sense to keep the frame rate high. Um, you know, as long as you don't put a absolute crap ton of rail vehicles and, uh, and power down on the ground, you'll get pretty smooth frames. Um, and that's, that's kind of done to, uh, to aid in that, but you'll probably notice it, uh, more in some areas than others. We'll keep on scooching southbound here. Got a little park on the right, I believe. Yeah, here we go. This is uh, it's a little city park or a county park right here. I think it's called like Spring Lake Park or something like that. Just a big, nice outdoor area to, to walk your dog or, you know, stretch your legs, whatever the hell. We got a, a road going under the line here. Now, this is, of course, the KCS Shreveport sub, this, this line right here. We'll get to the other bits of rail uh, as soon as we get down into town here. You got some team tracks and stuff like that that splits off. I don't think KCS really puts much up on these rails. Uh, mainly a siding uh, for train meets and things like that. Uh, they keep some maintenance away stuff. Um, you know, scrap, uh, gravel, all that stuff. This is an old uh, industry back in here. I don't believe it is rail served to this day. But uh, shit, just, I, I see I'm, I'm scooching over the little details here. Even the, the trackage coming back in here. So you've got this old car sitting here for, uh, you know, storage. You got ties laying all over the place. You got dirt up over the tracks. So they're not used super often. It's just more of that, like, rusted look. More dirt right here. Just grass and weeds everywhere. A big-ass dumpster on the left. Some tanks. Just little things like this. This is one tiny little area of this of this map it's just it's not always all about you know the main line and what you can see from the main line but uh i'm not exactly sure what the hell this is we'll take a look at the map real quick that's this little spur right here yeah it just says commercial storage i don't think anything here's now but you can sure as hell throw some uh some box cars back here or whatever the hell if you want but geez even god the trees coming through here this is what i'm talking about right here how just overgrown it is. It's it's like a, 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 a foliage canopy, if you will. It's just, uh, I love stuff like that. It looks really, really nice. We'll get up here. Got another crossing. Got quite a few crossings. Some of the area of the road actually goes under the line. And da, 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 da. Got another bridge here. Uh, but even that, look how, look how nice that looks. Except for the, <laughs> I don't. I don't think those rails would be super strong uh, there, but we'll we'll overlook that. That's that's totally fine. Keep on scooching down here. Yeah, so we just have like a little uh little maintenance facility down here. Some track maintenance type stuff, ties, ballast, you know, just general crap. There is a KCS shop down here somewhere or office. You've got a little porta potty over there. That's the other thing I like about this is just the, you know, I, I don't know what to call it. The, uh, like the trash suite, if you will, just kind of stuff everywhere. That's, that's what, uh, that's what catches my eye with this route. Anyway, you've even got some little gates here, which leads you back in there. Just little details like that. Love it. Love it. Love it. Got some big lights up there. Some yard lights, some more, uh, Rock hoppers. Uh, this is, yeah, this is a KCS shop down here. Of course, complete with, you know, people shooting the shit 
and uh, a couple KCS high rails. It's uh, it's nice. Looks nice right under that overpass here, and then we're coming up on it. The huge, huge interchange. We'll get right up there. Another level crossing. Uh, downtown is to our left, by the way. So that's downtown Texarkana over there. And here it is right up here. There is one little industry right here on this uh, this diamond. There's actually... Th actually... There's like, I think there's like three diamonds up here. But this is the first one here. This one is... And if I'm not mistaken, this one is still being served... Uh, it just says, wait, that's not what I'm looking at. That's KCS stuff up there. Uh, Miller Bowie Co-op. Yeah, so obviously some sort of uh, feed, aggregate, something like that. And that's right here on this diamond. All right, so I'm going to jump up in the air and try and go over this best I can because it's still confusing as hell. All right, so this is what we got. That's Texarkana over there. All right, I'm going to try and do Texarkana Railroads in a nutshell really quick. Well, quick on my terms anyway, which probably won't be very quick. But in 1873, this area saw the Texas and Pacific Railway join with the Caddo and Fullerton, or Cairo and Full Cairo. I say Caddo. Caddo's the area. Forget I said that. The Cairo and Fullerton Railway uh, building across Texas on a... I think it was a government charter. Uh, there was also a narrow gauge line, the Texas and St. Louis, that built up into the area, which was later eventually um, turning into standard gauge. That so was around 1880, which eventually became the SSW, which is also known as the St. Louis Southwestern, a.k.a. Cotton Belt. Uh, the amount of traffic justified two interlocking towers being built. There's Tower 28, built in 1903. Uh, where the TMP crossed the TNFS. And then later on, there was Tower 42, which was built with a complex electric interlocking, so it was uh, newer, if you will, near downtown, which is right in this area where we're sat currently. We're looking northeast right now, uh, where all three railroads crossed. Uh, and these towers survived into the 90s. Sadly, they are no longer here. All right, so we're looking north. This is the uh, Kansas City Southern Shreveport sub. Uh, the bit that goes west here is the Texas Northeastern, uh, which Jenny's in Wyoming owns now. Uh, that way goes to Sherman, and that way goes to Little Rock, Arkansas, through Texarkana. That's downtown over there. And then we'll turn around behind us, and this was the Cotton Belt route. Uh, what is now Union Pacific, and that way goes to Tyler, and then that way goes to Pine Bluff, and then south um, below us goes down to Shreveport, obviously, and then the UP line, uh, I think it goes to, where the hell's it go? Beaumont? Marshall? Man, I can't remember. There's, there's so many. This is a confusing area. So just look at a map here. This is it. Hi, caramba. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So we'll go back to the uh, the Texas Northeastern and take a look right up here at this junction. Again, if you look at this on Google Maps, it is literally to a T. He's got some nice uh, junctions and uh, some boxes laid down, signals, towers, all that good stuff, speed boards, uh, whistle boards, everything that's needed uh he is placed down um now this facility right here looks really cool and cozy as well but i don't think it is currently used anymore it uh it might have been something to do with uh chemical manufacturing or storage or something like that i know currently they do store chemicals over there but it's truck um you know which is probably transloaded from somewhere else but i don't think that facility is uh is a thing anymore um yeah that way goes west there let's see and then down here so we'll work left to right and then he's also got all these old uh 
you know, foundations in where stuff used to be. Because this used to be a big facility. I don't know what the hell it was. They do store some stuff down there currently, modern day. But uh, I have no clue what this was. If you know, uh, let me know in the comments down below. I'd like to know what this is. Love historical little bits like this. But uh, this is SSW or uh, Union Pacific now. And you'll notice a little branch which shoots off to the left, which goes over here. We'll just follow it through the tree line. Et voila, here we are. This is the old SSW or Cotton Belt Roundhouse. Now, when this was built, I'm assuming he placed it in a period where they were tearing it down and just getting rid of scrap. So that's the scene that's set up here. Uh, you can actually see part of the roundhouse back there. Modern, uh, I believe this area uh, receives, um, they do something with paper. They, uh, they send and receive uh, string liners or uh, center beams, if you will. So they just, uh, I don't know if they just store stuff here now, but this is what it looked like when the, uh, the area was being cleaned up, if you will. So that's what's going on there. It's the old SSW roundhouse. Again, little details like that. Very, very cool. Okay. Oh, and this right here, this, I think this is still, um, I think this is still being served uh, currently. I couldn't find uh, much about this little spot here, but I just threw a couple of, uh, a couple of grain cards or something down there. Again, not sure. This is supposed to be a couple of years back, so we'll go back up to the crossing here. The diamond signals both sides this looks very very nice through here and we'll go over here to union pacific or uncle Petey territory so this is the tner up there goes around that way and then this is all up right here so this over here is downtown tex arcana and what was used from assets from routes that this um you know this this add-on or this map uses uh it looks pretty damn spot on it looks pretty darn spiffy there is a major yard here uh there's also like some sort of uh it's almost like a progress rail type company i forget the name of the company but they handle you know freight cars and and repairs and stuff like that and that's that's the uh the bits on the south here if i'm not mistaken and then the up bit is the main yard up there but this is uh, this is downtown Texarkana. This is the Union Station right here. I've got a, an Amtrak Texas Eagle sat there, ready to head west westerly. And then, uh, oddly enough, there is actually a jail right here along the uh, railroad. That's that's kind of funky, but uh, it looks very nice. There's an old uh, hotel right here as well, which looks you know he he grabbed the right building asset and put that there as well. I don't think the hotel is still in operation. Um, but, uh, the little town itself, you know, it looks like a little Southern town, kind of, kind of frozen in history, if you will. Problem with these small towns, like a lot of old towns like this is, you know, they, they kind of die off in the heart, you know, and then the, the, the more modern things are built outward, you know, like a, a lot of apartments, neighborhoods, Walmarts, all that crap. So sadly, you know, the old town stuff like this, is just kind of sitting dormant. Sometimes they tear it down, which is sad. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. All right, so Union Pacific Yard set right here so you can do some work to and fro back in here. We'll go back over here. Got to get my bearings. This gets confusing, man. Very confused. Very confused. All right. Oh, wait, no, this is what I wanted right here. So Tower 42 uh, was built about right in this area. It looked uh, it looked right about at the junction here. Of course, it's no longer here anymore. I think they tore, tore them down probably about the 90s. Um, but that's where Tower 42 was. Uh, let's see. Let's go south. So this is KCS right here. And this is UP, the double. Again, very gorgeous scenery. There's, uh, there's little industries right here. Again, I don't think modern times uh, there's anything going on there, but you can certainly do some stuff in there, maybe throw some reefers in there or some boxcars or whatnot. We'll keep on going down. And here we go. 
This is a big yard. Um, again, it's it's very bare, but uh, but what this place did when it was operational, um, you know, there's a good reason it's bare now and being cleaned up. This was the uh, what was it called? The International Creosoting and Construction Rail Tie Manufacturer, and creosote is a nasty uh, form of chemicals to uh, basically seal the the rail ties. Uh, and that used to be here. It was a huge company. Uh, the other tower was right here where the tracks cross again. So this is the second. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, what do we got? One diamond. Two, three, four, five, six in this area for you diamond nuts, I think. Right? Anyway, so another diamond. This is the Kansas City Southern going that away. And then this is the uncle Petey going that away uh now tower 28 sat right here it overlooked uh this this big facility here and this was a big busy yard and they built rail ties it, tore, it got torn down probably sheesh i don't know maybe uh 50s 60s and then they started a uh cleanup process of the area so I mean, you could essentially do some operations with stuff like that if you wanted to, but uh, you know, as it stands, the way it's built, it's uh, it's pretty much what it's looked like the last um, several decades. So, geez, you've got the TNER crossing, SSW crossing, or UP uh, Kermagee crossing, UP crossing, Texarkana has got a lot of stuff going on. And then, of course, Union Station, which was up there, uh, you know, hosts, hosts Amtrak now, the Texas Eagle. But it was built in 1928, and it served Sunshine Special, uh, Texas Eagle back then before Amtrak took the name for themselves. Uh, the Texan, Southern Bell, which is a KCS service, the Lone Star, uh, Flying Crow, you name it. Texarkana, huge. There's a lot of stuff you can do here. Um, a lot of nice scenes you could you could plop down or just run straight on through. But uh, anyway, let's keep on going south. So we're on the way south, and I just wanted to take a minute to stop and appreciate the land in between these towns and these uh, these old whistle stops or flag stops, if you will. Look at this. This looks so good. This is some of the best stuff I've seen for North American roots. I know I keep saying it. It sounds like a broken record, but it does. I just see things like this when I'm, you know, flying along on a train, you know, flying around free roam like right now. And I just have to stop and soak it in. It's, uh, you know, it's a mix of, you know, of pine land, farmland, marsh, swamp, creeks, ponds, and railroads. And it just it looks damn good. All right. All righty. So we are many, many miles south. And here we have another paper mill because there's a lot of virgin forest around here. But this is called Graphic packaging international or the domino mill which again is another 
massive paper mill. So there's uh, obviously some stuff you can do, some work you can do in and out of here. He has completed about, uh, and this is the KCS line, by the way. That's north. We're facing north there. That's east, obviously, and then south, and then west. And the UP line is actually a stone's throw right over that way. And this can be served between both as needed. I believe they 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 get cars set out and dropped off, but they've got their own switcher, as a lot of these plants generally do, or a doodle bug or whatever the hell. So I got some cars set out there that a passing KCS might have dropped off. For the most part, this facility is built. Um, there's a little bit of stuff missing over there, but I think he did that for good reason because over here is the UP trackage, and you know you're not really meant to run. Uh, you know, UP over here. He might come back and finish it. Who knows? Uh, but this is the UPY into the, uh, or the lead into the facility here, which has got some storage tracks again here. It's loading a bunch of stuff. I may have to restart it here. Go! There we go. Jeez Louise. All right. Trees. Okay. All right. So that's that. That's the next big facility uh, south of Texarkana. And uh, we'll keep on going south. Alrighty, so we're back. Traveled south of uh, the paper mill that we took a look at between the KCS and the Union Pacific line. And again, it's it's always going to get me with this route. These, these little scenes like this. These little... Little country crossings, unguarded crossings, if you will. This is the KCS main line right here. Lots of trains go through here. And this is just some farmland out here. Some pine, scrubland, all that good stuff. And again, just just every little every little which way you look is is a nice little scene going on. These uh these fields back here are fenced in for the cattle or whatever the hell they got going on back there. Got power lines crisscrossing, nice little ranch down there. It just, this this looks, you know, anybody from the south or, or been to the south, you know, middle of nowhere places, I'm not talking big towns, like, this is what it looks like. Some random ass dirt road in the middle of nowhere. This is what it looks like, and he captures that. Yes, it's cool that it's got Hevener, you know, and Texarkana and, and Shreveport, but it's stuff like this. Uh, that gets me. Let's continue south, and I'll stop drooling over the uh, the rural scenescapes here. As you can see, more of it. So a lot of pine uh, logging or cultivating goes on down here. So what he's got going on is like over here, these are your saplings. These are your little pine saplings that they regrow. They let them grow, you know, however many decades, and they, they cultivate them and take them to these nearby paper mills. That's how it works. So, like, over here, this is probably cleaned out, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe five, ten years ago with the with the way those trees look there. Got another nice little rural crossing. That's a fun word, by the way. Rural. Rural. Oh, very nice. So, just look at this. Little, little, th little things like this, man. You go out in the country somewhere, and people that don't want to go to a, a a dump facility or a recycling facility and, and get weighed and pay, you know, they'll come out in the middle of nowhere and just dump their shit. This is a thing, and it captures that. Does it suck in real life? Yes. It's gross having a, you know, a bed bug ridden mattress with questionable stains all over it placed, you know, in the middle of nowhere, but uh, it's what, what it looks like. So it's, it's very cool. Over here, we got some fresh. Logging, as you can see, they're cutting stuff down. It's these little scenes like that. And I'm telling you, this is the stuff you're going to miss if you're just concentrated on the towns or the anchor points of this route. You know, you've got the half-cut trees everywhere. This is just, this is really damn cool. This is, uh, this is paper mill land down in here. We'll keep going. We've got a logging truck over there on the left about to cross the road. Got a little pond over here. I bet you there's some, some big bluegill. There's some smallmouth bass in there. And we'll keep on scooching. Down this way is a little town called Bloomberg. And it 
right past Bloomberg is where you cross into Arkansas from Texas. So we're kind of in Texas. It like skirts on the, the very, very eastern edge of Texas or North Texas, if you will, um, up here. So it, uh, it crosses over back into Arkansas um, down, the, down the road here. Got a defect detector up here, which is very cool. He's got these lined all throughout the route, which is very nice. Look at the way all that equipment's placed. That's awesome. That looks good. That's a nice little scene there. Again, that's not the only one. There's several uh, DDs across this line. Keep on going. Bloomberg shouldn't be too much farther south, but it's just uh, it's forest through here. And to think what this looks like, you know, versus if you go to the northern part of the map up in Oklahoma, uh, right around Rich Mountain and that mountain range that's up there, and what it looks like up there versus down here, it's nuts. This uh, I'm telling you, this this fella has the eye, and and he is dutifully done this route. And it uh, it looks damn good. This is Bloomberg right here, just another little small town. Got the old uh, downtown Main Street going over there, and it uh, if you even Google Map this place, I promise you, for the most part, this is what it's going to look like. This is you know small town USA. So it's uh, some nice nice little scenes all across. We'll get up real high here. So right about here. You'll notice, uh, no, my hard drive is not taking a crap. Uh, this is where the scenery kind of stops for now. Now, he has mentioned and, and made no bones about it. It's about 95% done. It's not too much farther down to Shreveport into Louisiana, uh, back behind us here. But there is a small portion that is missing scenery. Um, and compared to the portions that I skipped over, just, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of miles up that way, which very much do have scenery, this is but a small, uh, you know, pimple on an elephant's ass, if you will. This is, this is nothing. He will go through and, and fix this. I'm sure he's dedicated to this route, and it, it definitely shows. So that's about here. And then... Let's see. Here it is. He's even put it on the map. How damn cool. So that's the Arkansas-Texas state line right there. And the scenery starts again. Uh, let's see. We'll scooch down there. All right, so we're facing south. This is about where the scenery starts again. So a hop skip south from where we were. This is Mooringsport. Louisiana, and this is Caddo Lake. Uh, there is a facility right here, power facility. You can see he's got a lot of stuff done, but you can tell like right along here, he's he's just got some touching up to do. But when you go south of the lake, uh, the way that we're going to go here, it's pretty much filled out uh, for the most part down towards Shreveport. Again, the trees all over the line. This this canopy look of the trees like angled over the line. That's that that gets me. That's really good. So this is Caddo Lake right here. This is the old uh, draw bridge, which is very damn cool. I saw the scene last night and just about uh, killed over in my seat. This is scenic as hell. The bridges look incredible. It's uh, it's actual. It's, I'm pretty sure it's an actual uh, historic registered um, site, this bridge here. Old draw bridge. Used to be a lot of traffic uh, on this lake here. We'll go over that in just a minute. Uh, Caddo is for the name of the Native Americans that, uh, that lived, hunt, fished, gathered uh, in this area. It's, it's short for what you know people called the full name of the natives um, so that's why it's called Caddo this region in uh, Caddo Lake if you will this is the modern bridge here that goes over again for whatever reason this bridge doesn't show reflection you know some of you may not give a damn and that's totally cool I'm, I'm not super butthurt about it because if you're in the cab of a, a unit and you're up here you're not you know seeing any reflection so but one of the cool things that he's done here is a lot of these lakes and ponds and and sloughs and marshes and creeks and rivers and whatever the hell down here in, you know, uh, northern Louisiana. Uh, he's got 
you know, cypress trees and whatnot just sat in the middle of the lake because that's, that's how they grow. That's what they look like. So that's very cool. Don't, uh, don't be mistaken. Those aren't errantly placed trees. That's what stuff looks like in Louisiana. But God almighty, look at that. Just that, that scene right there. That's, that's a Kodak moment. That's picture perfect. Love the way that looks. Moorings Port, uh, pretty good size. I don't want to say vacation town, but uh, outdoorsy type town. A lot of, a lot of fishing, boat activity, all that good stuff. Got, uh, got the little town over here along the lake, which again is just a gorgeous little scene. Looking this way, towards the lake. Got your fire station down there, water tower. Whew, that looks nice. It's going to be incredible once it's completely done. I don't think there's going to be extended scenery beyond the lake. Uh, there will probably be some 2D trees to go out there to fill it out some so it doesn't look bare. But uh, for the most part, this area looks yappers. Looks very nice. Very, very nice. We'll keep on going. So we are now in Louisiana. We were in Arkansas for a hot minute. Look out. There's a copper sitting here looking for speeders. The, uh, the 5 -0, he's going to bust you. So, wash your ass. Got some storage tanks. We'll keep on going. Okay, here's some traffic yonder. So, we're going to go on down to... Jeez. The little bridge there. What is it? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Little town called Oil City. It should be right down here. And it's got a it's got a fun little story to it as well, historically. Uh it's it's not much of a town nowadays, which is which is a bit sad. Um, but as is the case with a lot of these towns that uh, you know, just went through their their phase of growth and then kind of stopped because, you know, time marches on, things change. Uh, but that's how it is. Another little Middle of nowhere crossing. We'll keep on scooching. We'll go super fast here. Look at all this line, though. Good Lord. Another bridge here. Oh, I like this one in particular. I remember seeing this here. Could use a little grass maybe on the side here, but that is a nice, nice cut. That road under that bridge there, that looks really nice. This right here is an old uh, Earl or uh, Transload facility. Um, I don't think it's here anymore, but it's just something extra you could do. Just a, a cool little scene. Just look at all the crap everywhere. You know, the, the Garbo sitting everywhere in the old cars and the facility. And the, uh, the thing to fill up the, uh, the rail cars with there. We keep on scooching. This should be Oil City down here. See, this is mostly filled out. Yeah, this is, I'm pretty sure this is Oil City. So we went, let's see, what's this, yeah. Let's find that little, that little branch. Where the hell did it go? E donde estas? Where am I at? It's like the smallest little spur. That's how I know where I'm at. There it is. Bam. Yep. Gemini oil field transload. So that's that. So let's see. Oh, we passed through Oil City. Shoot. It's another little, uh, let's see. I don't know. What is this? What is this? Blanchard. Oh, this is the Y. This is the Y that goes uh, to Greenville Sub. Yeah, getting ahead of myself. There's a big uh, boom town up here called Oil City. Which uh, there ain't much of it left anyway, but uh, it's it's just what it was named. It was you know oil was found on the lake and it had like the first um, water oil well uh, in the states, uh, if I'm not mistaken, on Caddo Lake, which was that big lake uh, we were up up near, um, and it was a it was a whole deal. But uh, we'll keep on scooching down here. So we are pretty close to Shreve. This is the Y. That way goes west uh, down to Greenville Sub. And then this down here is the the raceway into Shreveport. It should separate into three tracks just up yonder here. And it's it's 
it's pretty much done, as you can see. Like, most of this is done, except when you get down here, and this is Shreveport here. There's a coal train going back to the mines up north. So this is Shreveport right here. Um, massive, massive, massive Deramus Yard. Massive for the area, anyway. Um, but he's got, you know, you could tell he's got everything laid out, and this thing looks to a T again. Uh, this is this is Kansas City Southern's heart and soul right here in Shreveport, uh, Deramus Yard. Um, it's not uh, exactly finished yet. He's got most everything um, placed down, and uh, this is just the tiny bit he's got to finish. He's got to, he's got downtown back here, if I'm not mistaken. There it is, a little skyline sitting back there. So that's cool. He's it's pretty much done. He's just got to throw grass and little little tiny bits and bob, you know, assets down and you know dirt, rock piles, all that good stuff. But it's it's pretty much done. He said it is about ninety five percent done, and he is going to work on it continuously. Uh, but this is the state that it releases in now. And uh, whew, once this is done, I mean this this is already a North American train some route for the ages. But once Shreveport. Uh, and this yard is done. It's it's you know it's a it's a big deal. It's it's over 250 acres, um, computer controlled hump, 75 miles of track, and and like I said, the the heart of KCS operations, which is right here. But this is the uh, the KCS, and for the namesake, Shreveport sub. Again, uh, if if you're just joining in part two, I. I highly recommend going and checking out part one because looking at what's up in oklahoma and then uh when you cross over in arkansas and it's some damn good looking scenery and territory and a very nice place to run a train and, and train sim but that's it for now guys this is uh again casey southern 32's uh shreveport sub and it'll be linked down below um go and check it out you won't be disappointed i'll see you next time hopefully for part three which will have that filled out couple of miles of scenery and then uh, Shreveport, which I'm eager to take a look at when this is done. But that's it for now. See you next time, guys.